This episode is sponsored by Brilliant.org. SpaceX Starship Updates and Crew Dragon In Flight Aboard Preview. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates. Boca Chica doesn't seem to get any sleep right now. Work is going on 24-7 and SpaceX is in preparations for the next generation Starship prototype. And there are quite a few results we can analyze right now. As you know from my last episode, SpaceX recently did a pressure test with a test tank. This first test and most likely further similar tests in the near future are to improve manufacturing methods and to find a sweet spot between production cost and reliability. The recent test gave first numbers that indicate that there's more work to do. And I got quite a few questions why the tank looked so dented after the test. This is due to the sudden pressure relief after the rupture. This test, contrary to the pressure test done on the Mark 1 tank section last year, was not done with liquid nitrogen, but with water. Water is very inert. When the pressure suddenly was released, an underpressure was created inside the tank. This was even amplified by water pouring out more and more after the rupture had occurred. It's comparable to a thin plastic bottle. If you turn it around and open it so the water can flow out, the bottle will start to contract inwards the more water is flowing out on the bottom. Plastic though returns to its original form after the water is out and air can flow in. The metal tank doesn't do that. So it stayed like what we can see now. This does not mean that the tank collapsed or that it was too weak. In a normal scenario, when propellant and oxidizer are transferred out of the tank towards the engines, the pressure inside the tank is kept stable with the autogenous pressure system, feeding gas back into the tanks to replace the fluid. SpaceX is also working on the gravel pad in front of the onion tent. Lots of trucks brought the material in and workers right away started to apply the gravel on the ground. Even more space for new Starship prototype work. The dimensions of this second phase are getting bigger and bigger. SpaceX has received a delivery recently containing a water filtration system. Now these systems can be used for all sorts of situations, but one of them I could think of for SpaceX is the backflow of a precision water jet cutting tool. These produce a lot of water backflow and that has to be collected and cleaned. Water jet cutters offer a very precise way of cutting steel, which would definitely give the next generation Starship prototypes yet another tool to be constructed more precise. Isn't it a joy to watch this machine cut solid steel with nothing more than water? Mesmerizing. SpaceX has also started working on yet another bulkhead. Only from the jig we can see that again quality has improved a lot from Mark 1. This looks much more precise and the build speed has gone up quite a bit too. It now takes SpaceX only a day or two to build a complete bulkhead. This particular one has already been moved into the onion tent for further construction. So as it seems, SpaceX is performing parts of the work inside to protect the needed welding work from the elements. If you weld in the open, you allow oxygen to get to the weld due to the wind blowing away the argon gas, used to displace it. As a second step, the new Starship serial number 1 might be built inside the windbreaker. Many have asked in the comments of recent episodes if SpaceX might try a vertical build or if it even makes sense to weld some parts in a tent and then stack and weld in the open. There is a possible solution for you. The windbreaker should be big enough and would definitely enclose the Starship well while stacking and welding is being done on the hull. A vertical build of a Starship might not be possible due to the diameter of the hull and the material strength. A lot of internal structure would be needed just to prevent the hull from bending under its own weight. This is just speculation though and in the end SpaceX might very well surprise us with a way we couldn't think of before. As if they hadn't done this before. There's one more delivery I'd like to show you. This metal beam structure. It is big. That's all I can say right now. It's sitting in front of the onion tent, so it could be a lift structure needed to move and stack heavier segments and parts inside of it. We'll have to wait until SpaceX puts it together though to know anything for sure. And on we go with the mystery ring. Now look at this. Besides the holes cut out, where SpaceX workers wrote things like UFO docking bay test obviously to confuse us, there are now plenty more markings on the ring. It's literally covered with graffiti of all sorts. Some seem to make sense, others don't. 
Maybe after the Starship project has finished, this could be displayed as a piece of modern art. Anyone have an idea for a good working title? Yet another nose cone has been spotted as well, sitting inside the windbreaker right now. It's an indicator for SpaceX actively working on another nose section as well. It's still not clear yet though if this new nose section will be used for serial number 1 or later prototypes. The old Mark 1 nose section is still sitting where it was. There are no new road closures announced yet, but it is safe to say that SpaceX will keep on testing tanks and I'll of course keep you updated. If SpaceX really wants to stick to the schedule of launching serial number 1 by the end of March, they'll have to hurry. And I want to know what you think about it, so I'll set up a poll in the community section. Tell me when you think that first launch will occur. Crew Dragon in Flight Aboard Preview As if one seriously interesting project wouldn't be enough, SpaceX is also still working on the Crew Dragon and on its first launch with astronauts towards the ISS. After Boeing's failure to deliver Starliner to the ISS, everything is open again and SpaceX seems to be very determined to be the first one to launch astronauts from American soil again. Do you remember the very first Falcon 9 Block 5? Booster B1046. It was a game changer. This booster marked the transition between prototype and fully operational. Block 5 is the sum of everything developed in the previous block variants. And now it's going to give its life to catapult SpaceX into the age of manned flight. On January 18th, this very first Block 5 booster will launch the Crew Dragon in-flight abort test and it won't survive. Previously flown on three other launches in 2018 with Bangabandhu 1 in May, carrying the Maraputi Telcom 4 mission in August, and finally SSOA in December of the same year, B1046 has lived up to its expectations. All three launches were executed perfectly and every time the booster returned safely to its designated landing site. Not this time though. NASA and SpaceX are walking the final steps towards Demo Mission 2. The first crewed flight towards the ISS to be performed by SpaceX. For this, the in-flight abort system has to prove that it's fully capable of saving the lives of astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley in case of an emergency during the launch. Booster 1046 will launch from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center and fly a normal trajectory as if it was on the way into orbit. The test will match every parameter of a normal ascent. The booster will be fully fueled, so in theory it could perform a Dragon mission to the ISS. As soon as Max-Q is passed and the velocity threshold is reached at around 1 minute and 30 seconds into flight, the booster will cut its engines though, triggering an in-flight abort of the Crew Dragon. After this has occurred, the booster will be ripped apart by aerodynamic forces as the flight pass should become rather unstable with the missing nose cone on top. So this test should be quite exciting to watch. After the capsule has separated, it will do a separation burn with the Super Draco thrusters which we've already seen in the pad abort test performed by SpaceX. After the separation burn, the capsule will passively coast to the apogee of its flight path. Near the apogee, the trunk will then separate, also getting rid of the now not anymore needed stabilizer fins located on the outside of it. As soon as this happens, the small Draco engines will reorient the spacecraft for descent and parachute deployment. First the Drogue and then the main parachutes will deploy and then the Crew Dragon will slowly descend towards the Atlantic Ocean. As soon then as the capsule splashes down in the ocean, SpaceX recovery teams and an Air Force detachment team will get into action to reel in the capsule, mimicking an actual crew recovery for practice reasons. The booster though will come down in pieces with more SpaceX recovery teams in place to pick up the debris. The test will provide NASA and SpaceX with lots of valuable data. A successful test will pave the way for Demo Mission 2, hopefully soon after. I will of course be streaming the test on January 18th and the test has a 4 hour test window beginning at 8 am Eastern Standard Time, so be sure to mark it on your calendars. Seeing a SpaceX booster being ripped apart in mid-air and at the same time seeing a Crew Dragon doing an in-flight abort will surely be one of the highlights for this year when it comes to SpaceX launches. 2020 is a bit over two weeks old and we've already seen Starship second generation testing and we'll soon see Crew Dragon do its final test before shooting Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley towards the ISS. SpaceX is improving every day. Why not do the same? How about a good old New Year's resolution?
Whether you're a student, a professional brushing up or learning cutting-edge topics, or just somebody who wants to understand the world a little bit better, investing in STEM skills is one of the best resolutions you can make. Are you naturally curious? Do you want to build your problem-solving skills or do you need to develop some more confidence in your analytical abilities? Then look into Brilliant Premium and learn something new every day. Brilliant is a problem-solving based website and app. Brilliant puzzles you, surprises you and expands your understanding of the modern world. How does an algorithm work? That's too difficult to understand, right? How about approaching it from a different angle then? Start with simple drag and drop exercises to get you thinking like a computer scientist about how algorithms are structured. How does chemistry work? Learn the fundamentals of chemistry from the ground up by investigating chemical reactions. Play detective, picking apart patterns in the composition of molecular compounds and build the periodic table from scratch. Brilliant also has brand new interactive content that makes solving puzzles and challenges even more fun and hands-on. To make that resolution happen and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up for free to get access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 to join up through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So be smarter with brilliant.org. The link is in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Will you watch the in-flight abort test with me? And when will the first Starship fly? As always, tell me in the comments. And it's already over again. Thanks for watching and bye. Wait, we forgot the patron shout out. Dear patrons, thank you so much for all your support, for your ideas, for your research and for your funding and for carrying me for so long and for enabling me to do all this. And if you're not a patron yet, maybe consider becoming one. And again, we have a new member on the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Richard Goody. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It? and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Molecular compounds and build the pa 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 doesn't seem to get any sleep right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does. There are no new... There are... <laughs> there. I love always really like the on your calendars. Yeah. <laughs>